Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Garage Rock Podcast. We are doing this live uh, from Victoria, the coronavirus capital of Australia. My name is Steve, and joining me, as always, it's Mr. Cameron Banfield. How's it going, mate? Good, mate. How are you? We, we, oh. we, isn't it funny how we've got to elbow each other now? Like, <laughs> Isn't it weird how we say elbow? We elbow we each elbow other each and we other. say knee when we knee each other. But when you do fist, you don't fist each other, do you? <laughs> Like, that's weird. I'd be willing to fist you. Oh, well, <laughs> Steve, I'm no. not that kind of woman. <laughs> no, that's now, true. we have to do a bit of a disclaimer because sometimes things do get a little out of hand yeah. on this on this show. <laughs> I'm already it's there. Sweating. We are, of course, doing this on uh, Facebook Live, which is a first for us. It is a first for us. We, we've been meaning to do a live podcast for a while, and since all the cool kids are doing Facebook Live, yeah. we thought we'd give it a red hot go that is <laughs> and uh, the, the thing with this is we um, we normally record our episodes uh, in Cam's place as we as we normally do stop waving at yourself <laughs> oh, sorry. no I'm waving at the camera everyone people oh. are watching people are actually watching Steve I, this yeah. is this is crazy thanks for joining in let's uh, keep talking keep talking all right uh, so normally we uh, do record this at Cam's house and then take it home and edit it and make it sound good cut out all the shit but Tonight, we're not going to be able to cut out the shit. This is all going live. And Cam, stop touching the computer. We've got I'm people. To see who's, uh, who's watching now. Who's I don't want to know who's watching now. This is, oh my, oh my God, my parents. Oh, Trek Bonner, Tara, Brendan, Jasmine, Lex from Garage Rock. Oh, Zombo, how's it going, buddy? It's This is, uh, oh, my dad's watching. Oh, this is great. Hey, my Veronica Justin. Thanks for coming in. There's going to be more to this oh, show than just shouting out random names, I hope. Just got to show a bit of appreciation. Now we'll ignore you Absolutely. for the rest of the time. Cool. Thank you. We do have a big show coming up. Yeah. As always, you can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Spreaker, and you can also email us through garagerockpodcast at gmail.com. Garagerockpodcast at gmail.com. Com. And uh, that's where we uh, we get new music. So we've got new music coming up later. Uh, the people watching us live won't be able to hear the new music. But um, Yeah, we apologise yeah. about that. So you, you're going to have to listen to the actual podcast. Yes. So this is going to be an actual podcast, yes. Steve, which we did mention. Yes. So you'll be able to listen to the actual new music mm. when we're doing it. It's getting it's, hot in here, it? Is isn't getting it? hot in here. So take off all your clothes. No. Is, is the heater off? Let's just... this. This just in. Yes, the heater is off, Steve. <laughs> the heater's off. Why? The heat oh. is off. Uh, but we, what do we got to talk about? Yeah, hey, hang on. Happy birthday to Mr. Cameroni Knows. Oh, thanks. Show us some elbow. I'll show you an elbow show- and I'll show you a fist later oh. if you could. Now, got you this for your yes. birthday. Happy birthday, bro. 19 crimes, which is so fitting for 2020, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Thanks, Steve. Uh, should we do it's, a quick cheers? Uh, let's, let's fast forward and pretend that we just poured the drinks. Uh, there yep. we go. And geez, doesn't Steve? <laughs> I don't know. Pour don't... a what? What you can't, you can't see? see the oh, wine. There can, you go. Can you see the wine? We should mention that we do have a director off off screen who is watching us on a one minute delay, mind you. Cam's wife, Danny. You yeah, Cam, watching? As far as I know, <laughs> you my yeah my wife. Give it up for Danielle, everybody. Yay! And Billy and Edie are there. You want to come say hello? Oh, oh here they come. Here we go. <laughs> Hey. All right, now off to bed. It's Dad's time to shine. You want some wine? Go. <laughs> they've already, they already had some with their dinner. They just don't know it. Um, <laughs> so they sleep nicely. It's all good. I got this one from a Catholic priest, so it's totally good. That's a good drop. But geez, Steve, you you do pour a big glass. Like wow, I don't know how big it's. I think to be. I've turned you into a bit of an alco with this. So what did you do for your thirty fifth thirty fifth birthday? Well, what'd you get up to? I got some awesome presents off the family, which thanks very much, guys. Uh, you know, I got a nice packet of pods, Ooh. some uh, vouchers for some new clothes because all I wear is Blink One Eight Two clothes, <laughs> which isn't. It's nothing wrong with fashionable that. Fashionable anymore that I'm I'm 35. I, I'm not I'm not 23 anymore, Steve. So no, well, no one likes you when you're 23. Nobody likes you when you're 20. Or 35, I've found. We had a great day because we're in, now allowed outside mm. into the world. Into the world. We drove about two hours to Agnes Falls. Oh, yeah. To look at the beautiful waterfalls there. And the kids did nothing but complain on the way. No, they didn't. Nah. They Should were very the <laughs> looks you are getting right now. Which is funny because all they Your did Your daughter last is, is reaching for an emancipation slip. She's like, what the fuck is this going to talk about? The funny about? thing is the last three months, all they've done is complain about being at home. So <laughs> who can win? Exactly. Nah. Well, we have international in- views from England. Auntie Liz, thank you for joining us from England. From Liverpool. 
well. Fantastic. Thank you, Auntie Liz. You're not my auntie, but... Um, you well, are Liz. Um, and thank you for the cue cards. That's fantastic. Ingenious. We didn't even plan that. Steve, we're already halfway through our rundown, and what? what how, how, are, how far are we in, like... Not far enough. Uh, we do need to talk about... <laughs> I I got too close then, sorry. Uh, we've had some e- uh, recent interviews on the show. Yes, Tim Wheatley. Tim Wheatley, uh, who's got his new single, Lying Low, and also Des from Devil Driver, which that's is... A, that's a great get, yeah, isn't fantastic. it? fantastic. So make great sure fellow. you check out those interviews, guys, which we have plenty up at the moment. Mm. So, And actually, there was something that uh, Tim discussed, which... Um, it's it's interesting, and I don't know if I'd really even thought about it, but I think when we do get back to normal, if that ever happens, and let's just say, for example, well, the government we've, says we've never been normal, but no, we, no, we try. Let's say Australia gets yes, back to normal. Yes, right. The governments all say, just like New Zealand, hey, everything's fine now. All, let's all go back to normal, go to gigs and everything. What happens when all the bands at once try to book venues? <gasps> it is going to be. It's going to be difficult to arrange a tour because so many bands are just going to be wanting to get venues as soon as they can and trying to arrange tours. It is going to be a free-for-all. And that, that does sound like it could be good, but it's going to be very difficult as well. I mean, you think of all the bands, like let's take Violent Soho, for example. Like they release their album at the start of the year. They're wanting to tour it, but they can't. And I don't think that they would be the kind of band to go, hey, well, they're going to give us Festival Hall, but everyone has to stand a metre and a half apart and not touch each other. They're going to wait until <laughs> full restrictions are lifted before they announce it to it, as will Could you imagine bands. a violent Soho mosh pit without with violence. social distancing? <laughs> that, that just would not happen. No. Could you imagine us standing this far apart and going... <laughs> we do most yeah. weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I jump and people can actually see it this week. I think we're going to have to be patient and we're going to have to look at things like this, mm-hmm. uh, do live stuff. So I hope, hopefully we're being entertaining. All right, so what else we've got What else? Next, well, Steve? I, I've been, oh, oh. Yeah, you haven't finished yet. Go no, on. no, no, I, I kind of had. I was just going to say, I, I've um, because I'm a nerd, I've, I've been playing the new uh, The oh, Last of Us Part 2. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> I've been playing The Last of Us Part 2 and there was a dad joke in it. First of all, the game's amazing. You're uh, no spoilers. What? It's a video game, man. It's 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 kind of like The Walking Dead, but not. Oh. Well, but it kind of is. Anyway, oh, you lost there was me. a dad Go joke on. in it, right? Okay, and what? as soon as it came up, I was just like, oh, I've got to tell this to Cam. See what he thinks. Right. Uh, so, I mean, you're you're the barometer when I've it comes to, say, to dad jokes. I am Clear quite out the kids. partial to a dad joke, <laughs> yeah. aren't I? You are yeah. very partial. Block your ears, children. <laughs> no, it, it's a dad joke. Anyway, why is it so difficult to eat a clock? Why, why is it so difficult to eat a clock, Steve? It's time consuming. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, my brother is also a fan of dad jokes, so I sent that to him as a message, but I accidentally had a typo in there. So out of the blue, my brother just receives a message from me saying, why is it so hard to eat a cock? And, <laughs> and all of a sudden, I just got a message back from him in reply saying, it's not really, you just got to relax your throat. If any... <laughs> I tell you what, if anyone's got the actual, and the kids are gone, and the kids are gone, <laughs> their kids are gone. If anyone's got an actual answer, I can't read the comments on here for some reason. We're getting some lives. We get, ooh, we got an anger. We got an anger one there. We got a oh. wow. Oh, sorry. Some, someone didn't like the joke. No. Actually, probably my brother. Anyway, uh, so we, we do have to move on, Cam. We do have to talk about some stuff. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to get the comments up here, but. Uh I'll get my secretary, Danielle, to look at it. CEO, sorry. CEO, Danielle. To get, it's just a so pause. we can read out some comments. Has there been comments? There has been comments. Mm. Awesome. Oh, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But Steve, yes, Cam. what about mm-hmm. one of our favourite festival moments? Yes. I'm talking about, yeah, 2013. Yes. Soundwave. Mm, absolutely. Who played there, Steve? Oh, plenty. Oh, that was such a massive year. That was Blink-182. Uh, Lincoln Park, one of the last times Lincoln Park ever played in Australia. I think it would have been the last time they ever played here. Yeah, probably, probably would have been. Yep. Uh, the Offspring, yes. uh, which the following night saw them play Ignition in full. Uh, there was also a, a band from, from California called uh, Metallica. Metallica played. And now they've uh, they've put that uh, the actual Melbourne one, the actual gig that Steve mm. and I were at. The full two-hour concert cam is up on uh, YouTube. The Metallica Mondays. Every Monday they're releasing a full concert. They did one in Manchester. I yep. think there was one in Germany from memory. And now Melbourne's up there as well. It was Soundwave. Which is really, really good for someone like me because – I went and watched the first few songs, didn't know any of them because they played mainly <laughs> their 80s Pretty much. stuff. Mm. So that Metallica's 
earlier stuff and I'm a massive, which Steve is as well, mm. um, Offspring fan and I don't think I'd seen him live at that point. Really? And, or maybe for a long time. I can't remember. But I went and saw Offspring, which who I've rediscovered again yeah. lately and I've been getting the kids into it. And, geez, Offspring just fucking get me going. <laughs> get me going, Steve, which which brings me. Mm. No, I won't say that because that will give away uh, our question for next week, give away Ooh. my answer. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> so you already know the band. <laughs> okay. Um, that up. I actually bought Smash on vinyl the other day. Did you? Yes. Vinyl on vinyl, yes. Found it. I've been looking for it forever, and, and then I actually found it. So don't drop it. You da- might smash it. <laughs> oh, what was I saying about dad jokes? Wine <laughs> break. <sighs> oh, did we get the comments up there, Daniel? No, can't get it. All right, because there are none. Oh, that's all right. I'll just get it on my phone. Such a shame. On my phone. I'll read it later in bed by myself. Oh, I don't know why I installed a mirror above it. <laughs> Nobody wants. To I see. do know, but yeah. Nobody wants to see that shit, Steve. So how are we going? All right, <laughs> I'm fun. Well, no one's no one's left. No one's joined, but no one's left. Oh, we can't see. Yeah. Oh, all right. We got a few comments. We're going to go through a few a few comments here. I'm going to have to pick up the phone. This and, is going to uh, be dangerous. Oh god, here we go. Uh, oh, Jean Paul said I'll be at Download Wave Fest 2021. <laughs> Download Wave to it. Fest. Download it, Wave Fest. It will all have to be. That's well, maybe like be- a week long. Oh my god! A week long festival to, like you're saying, get for everyone in a, a download fi- wave. Oh, I'm already putting in me leave for work to yeah, go to that. That's a little awesome. It's a bit irresponsible, but yeah, no, fair enough. Go for it. No, I'm with I'm with the um, Jean Paul Bassi. Mm. <laughs> uh, what else have we got in here, Steve? Daniel Aaron's your brother said love a dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> Amy a- Amy's having a laugh. Pollard. Oh. Adam Pollard, who's written in a few times, what what a bloody legend! He's Absolutely. listened actually to every single episode that we've done, and I'm pretty sure we haven't Aaron, even done that. Aaron has as well. Yeah, I haven't done. I that. edit them, and I still haven't listened to it. Actually, uh, was it Pollard? You said took a few bands that we've played in new music and became fans of them. Yes, yes. Tell us which ones, Pollard. I'm interested to know. Yeah, I, I went away with him. He was listening to them, and it was great because. Obviously, that's a big part of our show is mm. getting live music. Uh, sorry, getting new music out there and live, yeah, promoting yeah, live music yeah. too. Live, but, Dolphins um, Cry, all the way. Yeah, there, there's not that many platforms around that, that give the little guys a go. So we, we'd like to do the big and small around here, don't we, Steve? Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> this will be a Ah, day. Tara says she's rediscovered Offspring too. Oh, fucking awesome, Tara. It's, it's probably the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Marvin. Marvin's from the UK as well. He's tuned in. Thanks, oh, Marv. Marvin. And Amy Marvin. said thanks for the shout-out. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Oh. Actually, hang on. Which album do you prefer? Ixnay on the Hombre or Smash? Oh, damn, Steve. Mm. I didn't know there was going to be a, a test. Pop quiz, hot shot. Uh, I'd, oh, it's tough because... No one cares. They, oh. both mean, <laughs> they both mean so much to me, but I'd have to go Smash purely because that was... Probably my introduction to Offspring mm. as a kid. Yes. So, um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. Just, Steve, you've got to be somewhere, do you? I was seeing how long we've run. No worries. I'll just it go seems fuck myself. too long. Ask them for comments. Oh, well, well, yeah, what's your favourite? What's your favourite Offspring album? Um, Tara and, and Pollard and anyone else? Yeah, Dad? Fate. What's your favourite Offspring album, Dad? Well done, Can you producer, name one? Danny. Bring it on. Danny with the notes. Bring it. What's your favourite Offspring album, Danny? She doesn't. She doesn't know any of Americana. Americana. There we go. Well done, because she's pretty fly for, for a, a white, white guy. guy. Exactly. Now we do have something we do have to talk about. Uh, the drive-in concert series, Cam. Oh, at the drive-in, are getting back together. That's, I was wondering why they weren't playing at this. They should be. They should be. If any band should be playing at this. Festival. It should be at the drive-in. Absolutely. So uh, the drive-in festival is, uh, due to the current COVID-19 restrictions, obviously, uh, the team behind festivals, including Beyond the Valley and Ability Fest, have created the drive-in concert series, which will be taking place at Flemington Racecourse in Melbourne between July 10 and 26. Now, what you do is you drive to the venue, you get yourself a park in front of the stage, and you watch some awesome bands play some live music. So... The, the glitter on your head is killing me. <laughs> oh, great. We've got COVID issues now. That's oh. all right. We're going to sterilise each <laughs> each other after this. We're going to hose you down in the shower. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a pile of tissues down below. Um, now, they, they should be doing more of this, Steve. Like, this is, this is a brilliant... It's the I next thought you were talking about tissues still. <laughs> I really did. 
They should be doing more COVID tissues in more the COVID. world. Mm, that's what we need. More COVID tissues. Garage uh, pod, pod, Garage pod Rock Podcast. Garage Rock Podcast is the next COVID cluster. <laughs> exactly. Um, we're actually next to one of the major clusters, did you see? Yeah. yeah city, city, of, of Casey. city of Casey. Not that's, to name no, names. No, not to name names. But that's oh, why. touched me. I'm oh, it. Sorry. I'm it. <laughs> actually, it was weird. Like, earlier tonight when I w- went to get pizzas, like, the girl handed over the box of pizzas <laughs> over the counter and our fingers touched as I grabbed the box and I realised <laughs> that that's, like, the first human interaction I've had in, like, three years. Also, it's the first weird. box he's touched. <laughs> In years, I couldn't. It's, I couldn't. I know, it, was there. it was there. I know. True. I tried to bite my tongue. It was. There. I know, and the grease was dripping out over my fingers as well. <laughs> anyway, uh, the festival will have boutique food available, and there'll be two big screens either side. So if you can't get near the front, you're still going to get a good view. Uh, the drive-in lineup includes many artists, including ballpark music, client liaison, lime cordial, boop, lime cordial, lime cordial. Excuse <laughs> me, mum. Can I please have a drink of red corgi gall? By all means. Oh, here we go. Jeez, that is a big red. That is a big that red. A big yeah, holding a glass of wine. <laughs> Lime Cordial, Boo Seeker, North East Party House, and friend of Garage Rock, Alex Lee. Hell yeah. Hell Check yeah. out her interview on Garage Rock Podcast. Too. Absolutely. Uh, now, Cam, yes. would, would you go to this? I would 100% go to this, and I think there should be more of them. I think there should be more artists playing them because I, I drove past our local, the Pally Bar the 21st in, mm-hmm. in Frankston today and it made me sad seeing Butterfingers up there on the sign May 16th yes. which was supposed to happen and I was supposed to go to it but obviously with everything going on we couldn't go yeah. so it makes me sad but now being a little bit inventive mm-hmm. and a little bit creative mm-hmm. You can go in your car in the comfort of your own car so I can, can you imagine the mosh pits in the car? <laughs> <laughs> Mosh pits, and the other get the things, Sandman you know, the, the other back. people bouncing around, a bit of bit of um, Titanic action in the back <laughs> window. I think it's great. Exactly. It's all in the comfort and privacy of your own car. Absolutely, it's, it's better than the porta potties, I reckon. No, definitely. <laughs> the, the hand down the window of the porta potty doesn't work. No, because it's usually smeared in shit. Yeah, now, um, that'd be covered in COVID. The thing is, I mean, you're watching a band, you're really rocking out to it, but you kind of constr- especially if you're the driver, you got a wheel stuck there, like a, a steering wheel. It's going to be a bit difficult. You reckon? Well, it's, I don't know, Steve. Is it worth just waiting? Well, I, I listen to a lot of music while driving, and. I don't let the the car get in the way of me having a good time, you know. <laughs> no, that's true. So and and it's good you can drum on the on the steering wheel. I've it's actually great. I do have a confession to make. I've oh, not <laughs> here we go. <laughs> it's all coming out now. I've been and my parents are still watching, so this is great. I've yes, been pulled yes, over uh, twice for aggressive drumming on the steering wheel whilst driving. <laughs> really? By police. You sure it was drumming? Yeah, well I was definitely <laughs> I was throwing my head back and I was drumming. It was definitely drumming. Yeah. I can't remember what one of them was, but the second one I got pulled over on Penlink while drumming along to – so I was on a freeway doing about 100K. But, and, and I'm the drummer and I do this all the time and well, I've never been pulled over once for yeah. this. Well, I was, I was just drumming away to um, In Bloom by Nirvana. Oh, how could you not? Uh, how could you not? And the cop pulled me over and he said – Mate, you, you, you're not driving properly. You, I'm like, I know that. He's like, oh, I'll give you a warning or you know, should write a ticket. He goes, oh, what were you listening to? And I said, oh, Nirvana. He's just like, yeah, that's pretty cool. And he, he just said, or he just oh, gave me a warning and that was it. Gave you a warning. Brilliant. Right, must have been a Nirvana fan. Brilliant, exactly. Which is perfect, Steve. Oh, you're still going on? Still oh, going I was, on I was, yeah, no, we can, we can move on. I mean, the only other thing I could say was I was only given a warning from a cop because I was white. To check out the full lineup and to buy tickets, go to the-drive-in.com.au and uh, check uh, out the full lineup and buy tickets. This just in, Steve. Hang on. I'm just, yep, just getting word. Apparently, smash. Wins. Smash smashed, wins. smashed it out of the ballpark for f- everyone's favourite Offspring album. Mm, mm, which fantastic. I hope people went to Good Things uh, a couple of years ago. Oh, they played it in full absolutely. and my life was complete, Steve. That's right. You my were... life was complete. It was awesome. Yeah, some guy in front of you just vomiting all over the place. Oh, yeah, sorry it's, about that. No, I didn't know. No, but speaking of vomit and Kurt <laughs> Cobain... Where'd the vomit come in? I don't know. Yeah, oh, I just it sounds like one. something Kurt Cobain would do. <laughs> <laughs> so, the guitar that the grunge rock icon Kurt Cobain played during Nirvana's 1993, 1993 MTV Unplugged performance sold this week for a record 
8.78 million Australian doll hairs. Dollars. That's that's insane. 8.78, Steve. Mm. Do- that's that's not that's not just pocket change. No, it's it? not. That's that- not and the thing is, so Courtney loves to sport herself a new kitchen. <laughs> Or, yeah. or I, know, I don't know what she spends her She's money on. probably got herself a new face now. Yeah, labia enhancement. I don't know what she does with her money. <laughs> Maybe, but, yeah, got rid of the few meaty bites or so. <laughs> oh, who knows? But here we have. Oh. This the, is, here we go. That's the guitar. There's the guitar right there. Can mm. you see that? Our listeners can't, but our, our viewers definitely can. Right there. That's the one that there. Guitar. I've got it on vinyl because I've got a beard and I'm <laughs> worthy. <laughs> I've got it on vinyl and I don't have a beard and I'm definitely not worthy. <laughs> Uh, the retro acoustic electric 1959 Martin D18E that Cobain played uh, just five months before his suicide was sold to an Australian businessman, Peter Friedman, founder of Rode Microphones, mm. which, thank you, these aren't those, but They're not those. you mentioned not to mention that. I so said, please don't bring up the fact that these aren't Rode Microphones. Technically, I mentioned it. Uh, <laughs> Why would yeah, you do that? I don't know. Now, Friedman said he planned to display the guitar in a worldwide tour with proceeds going to benefit performing arts. Uh, they are suffering at the moment, as you can see. <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> we have to resort to this shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, obviously, the performing arts are suffering at the moment due to the coronavirus lockdowns, as we keep banging on about on this show because Definitely. we're missing out on everything. Oh, tell me about it. Our lives are basically over, or they're put on stop for now. Yes, exactly. Right. Uh, until now, the most expensive guitar in history yes. was a Fender Stratocaster used by George Flo- Pink Floyd's <laughs> guitarist, sorry, I've read that wrong, guitarist David Gilmore, uh, which he sold for nearly $4 million during a charity sale in June 2019 when everything was better in the world but guitars mm. have gone up in price your house price gone down down your stock portfolio your which stock's fucked down down guitar prices so any guitar owners out there tell your wives hide your kids <laughs> tell them that your guitar price has gone up it's an investment so absolutely and if you're eyeing off a guitar or something that gives you permission to go buy that guitar now. Just just go to your wife or your husband. I don't know who who's who you're arguing with about it. Go to them and say, well, Kurtz went up in fucking value. Yeah. What, this is just, an investment. Just, just watch where you're standing, Steve. Oh. Just be careful of my $100,000 Gretsch over there. Oh, 100000 Yeah. Well, I, oh, hey, it's, oh, it's now 200000 200000 See, goes up in value over time, Steve. Over time, just <laughs> in one day. I'm not even going to play it anymore. Didn't know you did. Hey, Can't. You're t- <laughs> <laughs> but now it is time... For everyone's second favourite part of our show, I would say. Everyone yeah, it's new definitely music's, a part of the show. It is a part of the show. New music's everyone's favourite. When we shut the fuck up at the end, that's everyone's second favourite. Our third favourite moment would have to be the question of the week. Question OT week. Absolutely, Cam. And uh, do you want to take the first half? Yeah, or, yeah I'll or, take the yeah, first yeah, half. Yeah, well, I'm, just, I'm a bit dry after that. I have to read. <laughs> I know. Could I know. you tell? Yeah. <laughs> You're in pain and so were the listeners. I apologise profusely. Sorry, I, I, I shouldn't be so mean, but I am a prick. That's all right. Now, this question of the week for this week Absolutely. is what song best sums up 2020 so far? And a huge shout out to everyone that wrote in. Because, Absolutely. again, another great reply. And also, we couldn't fit everyone in. Apologies to those who couldn't get any on as well because we had too many. But oh, if, <laughs> if you are watching... Steve... Are you all right? Do we need to get the defib out? <laughs> Might need the defib. Uh, if you do need to, um, if you do have any suggestions as well while you're watching, let us know your thoughts. What song best sums up 2020? The year that will go down as being one of the shittest. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly and Ben both said Break Stuff by Limp Biscuit. Don't we like that? Oh, remember we saw Limp Biscuit and they yes. played Break Stuff? They did. I wish that was now, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, Travis has said Arsehole by Dennis Leary. Mm -hmm. Of course. Who's he referring to? Which reminds me when I was a kid, uh, that song came out, right? Yep. We would have been pretty young. Uh, 93. 93. So we would have been about. So I was eight. eight. Yeah. I remember my next door neighbor yelling out to his wife, and and that's when everyone listened to Thing on CDs. Remember those things? Yeah. It was after those things. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, what I everyone's mean, buying now. I just I didn't know the song at the time. Yeah, everyone's buying it now. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> I yeah, just remember my next door neighbour in the distance yelling out to his wife saying, 
Dahl, have you seen Dennis Leary's arsehole? <laughs> like, what? I was, I was eight years old. I'm like, why is he looking for Dennis Leary's arsehole? But yeah. yeah, it makes sense now. Yeah. How about that heat? <laughs> Steve's written in, said... Stephen, sorry. Stephen's written in, said, Everybody Hurts by R.E.M. Uh, everyone is hurting. Yeah, you're hurting your R.E.M. too, don't you? But that doesn't even make sense. I know, it's perfect. <laughs> Uh, Michelle said All Together Now by The Farm Christmas Day football match in No Man's Land during World War 3 World, World War 1 World War 1 <laughs> Sorry I'm saying double right now <laughs> Triple uh, sure. Sean said C Act C-U-N-T Act by one of my all time favourite bands Friends Will Rom Go Friends Will Go Go Friends Will Go it's a bird See attack. See by Friends of Rome and Bad Out of Hell by Meatloaf. Now, that is perfect. Mm. Bad Out of Hell. Get it, Steve? Do you get it? Do you I, get I, it? I, I get it. Because that's fact, what started this whole thing. Ah, Someone had now, sex now, with a bat. Now I get it. Actually, you know what? Meatloaf's performance at the 2011 Grand Final would be the 2020 Grand <laughs> Final performance. That's what it would be. If, if it was to ever go ahead. Oh, Uncle Phil from England as well has tuned in. And Eddie Parsons said, hot dog. Oh, Limp biscuit. yeah. What's a fucked up world with a fucked up place and every single one's got a fucked up face? That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> and the hot dog flavour water. <laughs> what what uh, did Millie say? Millie. Millie from Garage Rock, the TV show. Now, for people that don't know, this used to be a, be a TV show. That's mm. why we're so good on camera. <laughs> Out of practice. It's been we, a few years. We used to have a, a show on IINet, IINet, the internet provider, mm-hmm. and it was really good fun. Yes. And now we're in podcast form because it's easier and we're lazier. Yep. But Millie was on that and he's written in, got to go with the obvious on this one, mm-hmm. REM, it's the end of the world as we know it and I feel, feel fine. fine. But I, yeah, we feel fine, don't we? we? I mean, I'm, it's adequate. But, yeah, spot on, Mill. Thank you very much. Good work. Danielle has also said it's the end of the world as we know it, but I feel fine by REM. Thanks, Danielle. Uh, Les has said into the mouth of how we march by Trivium. Mm. Trivium. Who played at Good Things last year? They did. Was that this year? That was, no, that was last year. It was last, was last year. year. We yeah. were there. Who cares? Uh, Will said, Dear Dance by System of a Down. <laughs> Pushing little children with their fully automatics. They like to push the wake around. Yep. That? Oh, oh. See, this is why... Oh, I love it. That was probably the my worst. least favourite part of tonight. It was cringeworthy. It was, but we, we do that. Amy <laughs> sent in a few and she said, Amy, uh, who we shouted out to before, uh, she sent in a few... In a few and said, I want to break free by a queen. Mm -hmm. Certainly do. Um, Times like these by a fooies. Yep. And what a wonderful world. What a wonderful world. I can't get that low, can I? No, you you? you can't. Well, bend down a bit and maybe (laughs) give it a go. That's that's why I give you a fist. (laughs) Stop fisting me on camera. Sorry. You go. Um, (laughs) We did have a few more. taking it over to Steve, everybody. (laughs) Thanks, Cam. Uh, Lucas, uh, he said Run Like Hell by Pink Floyd. Um, Michael said Who Farted by the Vaughns. Do you remember that film clip? I do, uh, they're sitting, they're in, sitting a, in a car and, and it's sitting it, in like a limo, and he's got like a, a martini glass full of uh, baked beans. Yes, yes. Who farted from the album Crap Rap? Um, <laughs> Deanne wrote uh, Keep Yourself Alive by Queen. Couldn't say better than that. That's uh, what we're doing. Absolutely. Trying to anyway. Uh, Liam said Stink Fist by Tool. Oh, great one. I love that film video too. Clip, yeah. That scared me. Absolutely. Uh, Stuart said Don't Stand So Close to Me by The Police. That's probably the most apt uh, <laughs> song you could probably get right now. Should we Don't Stand On Me. Exactly. Uh, Adam said I Predict a Riot by Kaiser Chiefs. Ah, nice. Yes, yeah, especially of late. Uh, the Warm Up Podcast. Hello, the Warm Up Podcast. Thank uh, you, the Warm Up Podcast. Yeah. Check out the Warm Up Podcast. Yeah, thank you. I might have to. They'll, uh, they'll warm you up on these cold winter nights. Absolutely. Get a bit of a chill. Uh, they contacted <laughs> us on Instagram and said, Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne. Am I right? Crazy Train. Oh, yeah. There you go. Don't know. I shouldn't have done hey, that. He, hey, maybe he started. He ate a bat. No, well, on yeah. stage, remember? Yeah, but he would. Yeah, but he he ate the whole thing. He didn't fuck it. No, he uh, bit the head off, didn't he? I don't know. I, don't, I wasn't there. Was huh. it a real bat? Probably. He uh, thought it was a fake bat, but it was a real bat. 
That's what Kelly Osborne said on the Osbournes. Right. And yeah. everything on the Osbournes was 100% true. Oh, it's true. Yeah, he didn't have any drugs. No. No. No, not, no not. he was clean. Absolutely. Uh, Linda said, fuck the police by NWA. Oh, coming straight from the underground. Oh, we Brad, just, Brad has, has commented. Just got Brad a message. Said, Brad times like these, oh. Absolutely. Foo Fighters? I'm, ga- I'm probably. Even it's got to be the Foo Fighters. Yeah, thumbs things. up Foo Fighters times Thanks like for that, things. Danny. We're not here to sing, Steve. Stop. No. Fucking singing. Sorry. Sorry, go Jesus. on. Uh, JP said, American Idiot by Green Day. Oh. <laughs> Again, who the I hell could he be talking about? Yeah, I, f- I don't know. Dennis Leary, perhaps. A or something. Like and, and, and quite possibly the greatest response that we've ever had to one of our questions of the week. Yes, Emil. Emil, but, here we go. Uh, round of applause for this. You haven't even heard it This yet. response, it's great. Uh, I read it before. Uh, now there's, Continue. there's pressure on me to deliver it yeah, properly. Yeah. Going conceptual here, it'd have to be a song that is widely known, like the issues the world is dealing with, that is universally hated but loved by fuckwits, is annoyingly catchy, easily gets stuck in your head, also depressing, and you never want to hear the song ever again, but you know you're going to, and each time you do, the first thing you think is, ah, shit, turn this the fuck off. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. There are two choices, You're Beautiful by James Blunt and My Humps by Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> that is fantastic. So Emil, on, Emil, Emil. wins. Emil wins. He, he, we, we, there was no prize, but Emil's won. It's not a competition, but you You've get won. $100 because I'm going to sell my guitar that's now worth <laughs> $3 million. Yes, it, it's gone up in value in the last gone up in 10 value. minutes. Yep. Fantastic. Uh, but we do have to go to our, our answers. And Cam, I'd like to know, what song do you think best sums up 2020? Excuse my language, Steve, but it's got to be Kevin Bloody Wilson. Yeah. Everyone's had a bad day absolutely. during the, this year. Some would say you've had an absolute hand of a day <laughs> by Kevin Bloody Wilson just comes to mind with that. So, so how, how's it go? I, I don't, I don't I, I've got family watching. Oh, right, right. <laughs> Right. About a kind of a day by Kevin Bloody Wilson <laughs> is, is is my thing. Hopefully the kids are asleep. Absolutely. What no, about you, Steve? <laughs> what, what best sums up 2020 for you? Some days make you feel bad. Others make you feel worse. Some days make you want to swear and curse. I can't remember the rest of the lines. It's uh, always look on the bright side of life. Oh. Just, I mean, so I'm I didn't the most, get it. I neither did I. <laughs> I'm the most optimistic person you'll ever find. Always and I think, look on, on the bright side of life. <laughs> if I hadn't had so much red wine, I'd be whistling. But yeah. yeah I'm really we, dry. I'm dry as a, don't say it, don't you, <laughs> don't you say it, Steve. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Yeah, I think we, we just all need to think about the good stuff and, and the future and that. Yeah, you're... <laughs> Be positive, man. Be positive, man. Good message, Steve. Thank you. Here's, here's to the future. And thanks to everyone who wrote in. Absolutely. Uh, but, Cam, now, you sent me this one. as like, this should be our question for the next week. And it was on the day that you turned 35, so I'm wondering what the hell got you thinking this. <laughs> but go ahead, our question for next episode. Question for next episode, uh, which I came up with on my 35th birthday. What song do you want to be played at your funeral. <laughs> oh. What? Since, since everyone needs to be cheered up, let's think about <laughs> our funerals. I, I, seriously, why did you, did you think to go with that? Well, I listened to a song and I'm like, this is a good funeral song. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and I'm guessing it's The Offspring then. Yeah, yeah, well, I already, I already did, let that one slip through that, the keeper before, didn't I? That's all right. No one was watching anyway. So uh, <laughs> that's our question for next week. Hit us up, Facebook, Instagram, and also Garage Rock Podcast at gmail.com. Which song do you want played at your funeral? Well, you can do it now. We won't tell anyone. Yet, exactly. Though. We'll just hold it off. I can't even – actually, I know what song I want played at my funeral. You're yeah, going to have to tune yeah. in next time. Tune in next tune time? Tune in next time. Cool. Oh, my God, Steve. Yes, Guess Cam. what? What? No one's left. Everyone, everyone's gone. <laughs> Oh, thanks everyone for sticking with us. Yeah, like, this, this is surprising, is, um, but thank you. Yeah, I'll, I was expecting. I love you. I fucking love you, Steve. Don't grovel. I told you not to grovel. Is it time for? It's time for new music. It is time for oh new my music. God, yes. It's time for new, new music, music on Garage. Dibby dobby doo. Rock. Rock. Yes. I was going to get the guitar out for that, but it's worth <laughs> way too much to play <laughs> I don't, now. I don't, I don't want to break a string. There yeah. goes like a hundred grand. Oh, we should do a little bit of a teaser about our, our jingle there. What? 
We're actually thinking about recording. Uh, uh, we, we said that a year ago, and it still hasn't happened. So. Yeah, but COVID happened. We, yeah, but COVID can't. happened. It kind of, yeah. kind of slowed. And shit I need down. to get a cheaper guitar so we can actually play it. Yeah, but by the time we play it, it'll go up in value. So it is time for new music. Like we said before, you're not going to be able to hear the songs because we're not that well endowed yet. No, is no. that the, that's not the right word. No, no, we're not that well. We are. Um, we are well endowed. <laughs> you just can't see because the screen goes to here. You are. If you listen to last week, you could. <laughs> You could see why we can um, keep 1.5 metres apart. Now, <coughs> first song, Steve, for new music is Soot by Minor Premiers. Their Brisbane indie rock group, Minor Premiers, have just released their debut album, Sheets in the Garden, which opens with the track Soot, which is really cool because my, my dog, when I was a kid, was Sooty and we used to call her Soot. I thought when you were in high school, your email address was Sooty? <laughs> Going well, back 20 that? years. Yeah, sooty90 at hotmail.com. <laughs> it may or may not still be that. but It, it probably hey. still exists, but it's just full of spam. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, these guys recorded this album back in 2017 in Violent Soho studio, The Shed, and they've been keeping everything under wraps since then because obviously everything's under wraps. Well, yeah, like, not for three years. <laughs> not for three years, yeah. Why would they wait so long? I don't fucking know. I'll I mean, tell you what, about- though. It's pretty cool. It's pretty chilled out. Let's check out Soot by Minor Premiers. Soot by Minor Premiers. Very cool there, Cam. Our next track is by Adelaide-based indie pop-punk duo Wing Defense, and they've just released their new single, Relocate, which is the latest single off their forthcoming Friends EP, which is out on July 3rd. Now, Wing Defense have been getting plenty of praise after their appearances at Groove in the Moo and Laneway festivals, as well as on stages supporting the likes of Polish Club and The Vans, which is pretty cool, Cam. Oh, awesome. Absolutely. Uh, Now, this is a really catchy uh, track, and it's got a great chorus, and is an interesting preview of the EP to come in July. So let's check it out now. This is Relocate by Wing Defense. was Relocate by Wing Defense. Up next, we've got Take a Chance by Naked Giants, which is named after Steve in the shower. Now, (laughs) Seattle trio Naked Giants have announced the release of their new album, The Shadow, which is also named (laughs) after Steve in the shower. It's like a fucking sundial. (laughs) (laughs) On August 21st, featuring their new single, Take a Chance, which is also (laughs) named after Steve in the shower. Uh, Naked Giants have been named Seattle's best live band, which I've checked them out on YouTube, some of their live shows, and they definitely live up to that name. Mm. That was by the Seattle Times that said that. Mm-hmm. So Seattle Times never lie. No, they don't. And Seattle, like, that's that's one of America's home of music. Exactly. Homes of music? So your guitar there would be worth a shitload. 
Uh, yeah, they, uh, the Seattle, Seattle Times said that at the end of 2018 and the Rolling Stone named the band one of the best 30 artists we saw during South by Southwest in the same year. Mm. So big raps there. Yeah. Let's check out Take a Chance by Naked Giants. I was never stricken by a bullet. Still learn to march Now I I'm playing tricks to make a profit So I Can make a little bit more So take a Take a Chance by Naked Giants. Pretty cool track there, Cam. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, Our next track is by Sydney rock group Johnny Hunter, and they've released their new single, Hollow Man, which is taken from their upcoming EP called Early Trauma, which is set for release in August. Now, I saw these guys open for Press Club last year in that strange period of time when you could see live bands. What kind of world were you living in? Felt like a decade ago, I think. Uh, Now, their lead singer, Nick Hart, uh, has got a lot of energy, and he really tries to engage the crowd. It was one of those bands where he just he just went out into the crowd and really tried to just own the room. We live for that stuff, Steve. Absolutely. Especially for a support act and he really did a great job for it. Uh, Now, they've got this really great post-punk sound and remind me a lot of Joy Division, The Smiths, The Cure, that kind of sound. So, if you're into that, check them out. This is Hollow Man by Johnny Hunter. Man by Johnny Hunter. Up next, we've got MMA by Voodoo Blue. Wellington based artist Rory McDonald, who goes by the name Voodoo Blue, has released the new single MMA. According to Rory, this song is about one drunk friend or even just an intoxicated arsehole you meet when out in the town on substance driven adventures. There's always one, isn't there, Steve? There's always one. After that big glass of red, I think I know who it is. <laughs> I'm surprised Tonight, it's gone. Nah, in all seriousness, if you like a bit of old school punk, mm-hmm. freaking love this shit. This <laughs> the the film clip's really cool as well. Just the way mm. it's really simple. It's um it's Rory getting stuff thrown all over his head, and it's in reverse, and it's you know like spaghetti and eggs and all sorts stuff. of stuff. Yeah, it's 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 really simple but creative. So mm. check out MMA by Voodoo Blue.
was MMA by Voodoo Blue. Pretty cool track there, Cam. A bit of punk for your for your for your day. For I your love for it. your for your day. Yeah, for Willington. Uh, our final track for tonight, Cam, is Where to Start by Bully. Now it's a Nashville rock trio, Bully, and this is the first single taken from the band's upcoming album Sugar Egg, which will be released on August 21 through Sub Pop Records. Talk about Nirvana, Sub Pop Records. Yep. Uh, there, there we go. I mean, it's just all coming coming around full circle. Now this is just a really cool rock track, uh, pure and simple. Uh, now I mentioned Press Club earlier. Uh, the vocalist slash guitarist Alicia Bognano reminds me a lot of Natalie from Press Club. So if you're into Press Club, you probably like this song as well. Uh, it rocks. Check it out. Uh, this is Where to Start by Bully. was Where to Start by Bully, and Steve has been a bully to me. Definitely so. was not. Oh, we're getting a lot of loves and a lot of thumbs oh. up. Thanks, guys. Oh, thank you. That's awesome. Uh, we yeah. like and love you too, depending on what you said. And one of our biggest messages is go out and get tickets to live gigs. If you've got live tickets that have been postponed, make sure you keep Hold them. Hold on to them. And go to them and go to the, the drive-in hey, festival. And you know what? Call your mother. She misses you and she wants you to call her. She's, she's fucking lonely there. She does. Yep. Give her a call. Hi, Say mom. hi, mum. My bum. Not that hard. Steve, it's been great. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's it's been a bit of fun. Are we wrapping this up? Yeah, I think probably. We, yeah. I think we should. I think everyone <laughs> wants to get back to their proper entertainment. Exactly. And, um, the voice is net- about to start. So. Oh, the voice! Well, you're the voice. Try and understand it. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I did I know? Did. It's it's, yeah. it's predictable as usual. But hey, thank Namaste. you very much for joining us. We've really enjoyed your company tonight. Namaste stay here any longer. <laughs> <laughs> don't give Steve any more red wine because he might pass out. I don't really drink that much. The only time I drink is when I do this podcast because <laughs> I have to, to same, get through it. Same, Pretty no. much. Uh, th- uh, thank you to everyone who's been watching us live. We really do, A, appreciate it, and B, thank you very much for doing it. Uh, Cam, thank you for, for joining me once again. Thank you, Danny, for being our fantastic producer off mic uh, who's been holding up signs and giving us yes. you know, well done, Danielle. Giving us pep again. talks. And thank you very much. We couldn't have done it without you. Giving us you know, she's saying, oh, there's two viewers and now there's three. Oh, it's back to one. It's, it's been fantastic. We really do appreciate that. Uh, Cam, I, I fucking appreciate you. Oh, you too. Damn, El- happy elbows birthday. All round. Elbows all round. Elbows, elbows all round. to the face, all everything. Right. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Oh, we should say see you next time. Uh, see you next time. Yeah, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Spreaker. Garage Rock Podcast at gmail.com. Oh, Thank you so share, much. Share, and share, like, share, share and subscribe. Bye. 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 Love you. Bye.